Today we're driving the 2021 Jaguar F-Pace R Dynamic S. This is powered by a 3 liter inline 6. That's turbocharged and supercharged and it has a mild hybrid system. We're going to walk you around this Jaguar F-Pace today. We recently test drove an SVR. That was fantastic. Made lots of fantastic noises. This is a little bit more muted, a little bit more comfortable, though that inline six does sound pretty sweet. All right, it is a cold Michigan morning out here today, so we're gonna keep the walk around brief, but this is a very nice looking SUV. This interior is absolutely gorgeous. Love these seats, lots of optional extras on this F-Pace today. Starting price is just over $65,000 as spec this is 81 grand but there's a lot of stuff that's on this press car that you probably wouldn't really need in the real world but that's the way it is with luxury suvs from europe these days you have to pay to play let's open up the tailgate take a look in the back pretty spacious back here lots of room we have a compact spare tire I do like the packaging of this F-Pace. It's nicely sized. There's plenty of room in the back seat. The interior space is really well accented. We've got rear climate control, nice panoramic sunroof, beautiful Alcantara on the headliner. Nothing too disagreeable about the design on this F-Pace either. I think all the design elements come together really nicely. The proportions are beautiful. Love the headlights, the grille design, little Jaguar badge in the front, our dynamic to show you that there is just something a little bit special about this powertrain. Speaking of which, let's pop the hood and take a look underneath. Not a whole lot to see, just a lot of plastic, but there is a, a lot of running gear shoved under there. The reason I'm told that this is not put in a sedan is because it will not fit the turbocharger, the supercharger, the mild hybrid system. It all comes together to make a pretty tight package, even in this F-Pace. Let's take a seat in the back. I'm five foot 10, seated behind myself. Got a good amount of space back here. Stop. Decent amount of headroom, a couple inches, even with this panoramic sunroof. I just love these seats. Oh, they're super comfortable, they're highly adjustable. Pretty nice looking interior, very sharp. I love the materials in here. Jaguar has really upped their game with interior quality, and this F Pace is a great example of that. Nice armrest here in the center. Pretty nice place to be. We have the Meridian surround sound system in this F-Pace, which is definitely an option you want to check. All right, we'll hop inside, show you around the front seat a little bit more, and we'll take this thing for a drive. So we glossed over the interior a little bit on the SVR, but I have a few more things to say about it. We've got this infotainment system. It's all touchscreen. And we've got this funky climate control setup that has partially buttons, partially, uh, they're not quite haptic buttons, but they're just kind of hard press screen icons that are backlit. And it's okay, you do have to kind of press these climate control buttons a little bit harder than you would think. You get used to it though, you kind of adjust your inputs accordingly. And these climate control knobs are interesting. You push to adjust your heated and cooled seat controls and you pull to adjust your fan speed. So you can sync that fan speed or not, or have dual climate control. There's also a rear climate control. So if we go here, we can see our climate menu and we can adjust front or rear accordingly, whatever we want, temperature, all that good stuff. It all seems to work pretty well. Auto has been great this week. There's a quick access button here for the seat heating controls. You can turn on your heated seats right there, select which zones you want to be active. You can also cool your seats, 
there too, depending on plus and minus settings. Turn everything off like that. I like the responsiveness of this touchscreen. We get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It all seems to uh, work very seamlessly. It's a beautiful display. It's nice and large. It's slightly curved, which is interesting. Um, something I didn't really notice until after a couple days with it when a buddy of mine pointed it out. Um, we've got our wireless charging right down there. Nice size cup holders, little charge port down there, and a little bit of space with two USB-C ports, or actually a USB-C and a USB type A port in the center. Nicely sized glove box. Let's move on to the steering wheel controls. Similar backlit buttons that aren't really buttons, but are buttons. Uh, again, you have to kind of press them aggressively to get them to work. It seems to do okay once you kind of calibrate your brain to it, but I would prefer an easier system to use and to live with. It would be nice to have some more separation between these buttons. Luckily, you can't accidentally press them just by moving your hand over them. You really do have to give it a physical press, which I like. Um, the center display here is a bit interesting because it's kind of just a big mishmash of menus and I'm kind of having a little bit of trouble navigating it and finding really what I need. I've just been leaving it on the trip bank today. and You can kind of select trip A, trip B, trip auto, and it's all just a little bit overly designed. There's, It's sluggish to respond. There are too many menus. Um, and these controls, you can see, they just don't work very well. Um, I'm kind of stuck here now. I don't really know how to get back out of this. There we go. Anyway, so you're really not gonna be using the center display that much just because it's kind of tedious in my opinion. You can adjust your head up display settings in here, which is nice, that's already pretty well adjusted for my viewing. And uh, I think you just swipe up to get rid of that menu, which we're back to the trip. You can see we've averaged about 20 miles to the gallon on this this week. This is rated for 22 MPG combined. We have 395 horsepower, eight speed ZF automatic, all wheel drive, all the specs you would expect from your $65,000 plus Jag. All right, let's take this thing for a drive and we'll talk about what it's like on the road. Nice little reverse camera, 360 cam action. Um, expecting a little bit larger of a display with a screen here, but that's okay. Mirrors tilt down so you can see your curbs. Rotating lines. Pretty nice visibility all around too. We've had quite a bit of snow this week, and uh, these Michelin Touring all-season tires, uh, they haven't been that impressive, honestly. The all-wheel drive kind of saves this Jag in winter driving, and the uh, stability control system is nice. It does have torque vectoring by brake, and that seems to do a pretty nice job getting the vehicle cornered around uh, slippery turns, but these tires definitely leave quite a bit to be desired in the snow, so I would highly recommend getting a proper set of all seasons or winter tires if you're gonna be driving in a winter climate. Otherwise though, this is a very comfortable, nice SUV to drive. It's very smooth, the eight-speed auto makes really nice shift decisions. It's pretty quick too. There's a lot of torque and response from this three liter inline six. The mild hybrid system gives you just a little bit of instantaneous throttle response and then the supercharger and turbocharger make for a really linear power band right now we're in comfort mode we can also go into dynamic mode which is kind of the sport setting a little bit more aggressive throttle response the gauges turn red and we get a little bit more volume out of the exhaust Nice sounding inline six, a little bit artificial in some RPMs. Paddle shifters are not as responsive as the SVR was. I would not say that this is a sporty experience. It's a quick SUV, but it's not necessarily a sporting SUV, despite the R dynamic nameplate and badges all over it. This is more of a luxury cruiser 
Ride quality is a little bit on the stiff side. These 21 inch wheels don't help with matters. This does have adaptive cruise control, which is nice. We'll test that out here on the highway. Plenty of torque from this powertrain. So we'll turn on our cruise control here. You can switch between a speed limiter and adaptive cruise or traditional cruise. You can switch from adaptive to, to just old school cruise control by holding this uh, distance button, the down distance button for a few seconds and that'll shift. Lots of distance control. You can skip five mile an hour increments by holding the up down set plus and minus buttons. Adaptive Cruise seems to work pretty well this week. Again, just kind of getting these buttons to work when you want them to has been a bit challenging, but otherwise everything seems to do a pretty nice job. Blending with traffic, adjusting speeds smoothly, making changes, lane keep assist. It just kind of bounces you back and forth between the lines. It gets a little bit confused sometimes. I will say that this week I have really missed the option for a heated steering wheel on this Jag. This leather is freezing when you get into it first thing in the morning, though I know there is the option for it. A little unilluminated heated steering wheel button right down there at the bottom. Let's see what our turning radius is like. Pretty good. sounds pretty nice in comfort mode. Our dynamic, I think, pipes in a little bit of artificial noise. We have a couple more drive modes. Eco, ADSR, which is Adaptive Surface Response, which is kind of your inclement weather slash off-road mode. some changes to traction control, the way the all-wheel drive system works. Haven't really been able to push this around a corner all week. It's been pretty snowy, pretty wintry. And in Southeast Michigan, we're not very good about clearing our roads. So how can we sum up the Jaguar F-Pace, our Dynamic S? This is a pretty nice all-around SUV, a great alternative to some of the other European rivals. I don't think there's anything class-leading here, but it is a nice package. It's attractive, it's a little bit different from uh, what everyone else is rocking these days, and I like that about this Jag. It's a decent SUV to live with. These buttons and the effort that it takes to press them is really the only annoyance that I have with this interior and cabin. Infotainment seems to work pretty well. The tech here is integrated well enough, I think. Materials, touch points, everything is fantastic. You feel like you're in a very nice luxury SUV. I would like a few more features as standard on this for my 65 grand. I think this is a little bit of a steep price for not getting adaptive cruise or a heated steering wheel or you know, some nicer leather and materials, but that's just how it is. I love these seats. That's a great option to check. Uh, a couple thousand dollars there, well worth it in my opinion. This powertrain is also very nice too. It's torquey, it's quick, it's responsive. I don't think it's very sporty to drive though. If you want something that is a little bit more exciting, I would swing for an SVR. And uh, with how this F-Pace is specced, that's only about 10 grand more. So, you know, not, not too much of a price difference there. Any other complaints about this? I think it's a little bit stiffly sprung for what this SUV is. In an SVR, I understand this having a little bit stiffer suspension, but in this more regular, consumer-oriented F-Pace, uh, the suspension's a little bit stiff, the ride's a little bit harsher than I would like for my luxury crossover SUV. 
Uh, that said, that could be partially because it's 16 degrees outside and shock fluid, all that stuff gets a little bit stiffer in the winter time. And these 21 inch wheels definitely don't have as much sidewall cushion to them. If you're driving in the winter, I definitely change out these OEM Michelins for something more all weather and snow capable. I think uh, these factory tires just, uh, they're good enough for fuel efficiency, quietness, comfort, and you know, most driving scenarios. But if you're gonna be driving this in the snow, uh, this was actually struggling to get through about four or five inches of snow earlier this week around the neighborhood. I actually just put this back in the driveway and took the forerunner. Uh, let's park this, give you one more walk around, and uh, we'll test out the Meridian surround sound system. Also, might even just throw it into adaptive surface response mode, see what that does in a snowy parking lot. Still limiting traction control quite a bit. There is a traction control off button right there, which is nice. You get quick access to that because the standard traction control on this F-Base is very intrusive in the snow. It doesn't allow any wheel spin. It's kind of cool though that the drive mode button <laughs> goes back in and you can push it to bring it back out and change drive modes. Nice. Press the P button to park, turn it off, and we get the view of an F-Pace right there. Definitely one of the better looking SUVs on the market, in my opinion. Just has great proportions. Not over style. There's not some huge garish grill up front. All right, let's go in, listen to our sound system test playlist. Got a volume scroll wheel down here and right here on the steering wheel. 